video and adding. Hi. Hi. Oh, there it works. My background. Okay, well, I guess we can go ahead and get started. So, my name is Vanessa. I am an intern at the UTEP SCLC, and you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Brianna Contreras, and I am an undergraduate assistant at the UTEP Food Pantry. Awesome. So, I guess we can just go ahead and get started by, if you want to go talk about your role at the food pantry and That's what the food pantry does. Definitely. So I'm an undergraduate assistant at the food pantry. So I kind of do a variety of things. I make sure the pantry stocked, that we're having donations come in. We do outreach with the community. I have students, you know, helping them get the food, seeing what they need, offer what the resources we have available and other resources out in the community. So the Utah Food Pantry offers food assistance to students who might be food insecure. We definitely um, offer food resources and they could take a meal for that day or they're able to take a, a week's worth of groceries. And typically, normally, if, if it wasn't this during this time, they're able to come twice in the week. I mean, twice in the month and they get groceries for the week. But during this time, since we know things are a little harder and we want to offer as much support as we can. We're offering students that are able to come every week. So they're able to come four times during the week. And they're able to get uh, four times during the month. And they're able to get groceries for the week. And we also have, along with uh, food items, we also have toiletries. So we have anything from like feminine products, toothpaste, toothbrush, different things. It just depends on what we've donated. And along with that, we also... We also push for education and research and uh, research with e education. And we're doing research to see about food insecurity among campuses of, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> campuses of the and also we push for advocacy. Oh, so we awesome. do a bunch of different things at the pantry. I didn't even know that you all had um, products aside from food. Yeah, definitely. We, we just started this year, I believe um, our, our collection of toiletries is growing. Oh, that's awesome. And for the donations, do you all have to take, like, is there certain requirements? And then is there requirements for, like, um, people, do they qualify for anything to be able to take any of the donations? So our students just have to be enrolled in classes. And that's, that's what it means to be active. And so during the summer, you do not have to take classes to access the pantry right now. But you do have to be enrolled in classes for the fall. So fall 2020. So if you're enrolled in a class, and it doesn't have to be uh, full-time, it could be part-time, it could be one class. As long as you're enrolled in one class, you're able to access the pantry. And so you just need to present your minor ID card, and we just swipe it, and then that shows us if you're enrolled. That's all the information that it shows us is they're enrolled and they're active. And so with donations, we're always encouraging donations. So we're only run off of donations, which means whatever items are donated into the pantry is what we have on our shelves. So there's no funding coming into the pantry from UTEP or from, gover the, from the government. So we're always encouraging donations year round. And with that, we, we just typically accept non-perishable items just because that's what we have the capacity for. Mm -hmm. We don't accept like anything that needs to be refrigerated or bread or something that goes bad, you know, soon. Yeah. So yeah, so it's like canned meats, canned, fo uh, canned fruits, canned vegetables, peanut butter, jelly. We do a lot of a lot of our students like the cereals, uh, box pastas, pasta sauce, and with that we just ask if, uh, people who donate. They're mindful of the expiration date, and also if the package is tampered with or open, we're not able to give that to students. And another big thing that we're we're telling um, anyone who wants to donate is that maybe they don't want to go into the pantry and donate right now. We also have uh, our website, and that has a donations tab. And that, if you just search up UTEP Food Pantry, that will, that, on Google, you could find our website. And through that, you'll find a tab that says donations. And with that, you could make a monetary donation. So we're also really encouraging that right now. So with that, that, with that money, we're able to go buy, buy some food. Because right now, we are seeing, you know, students are accessing it more. Mm -hmm. 
And how much donations do you all usually typically typically get? Like, do you all have a certain goal you have to reach? Or do you guys, like, keep inventory and, like, try to track it? Yeah, we do have an inventory, and that's, that's for us to see what's coming in. And so every time we get a donation, if it's monetary or if it's someone coming into the country and giving us items, it, we just have a sheet, and then they kind of tell us, like, what they brought in, who they are, if they want to say their group or their name. And then they tell us, like, what they donated and like how maybe how much like they think it's worth and with that we just like to see like you know what we have at the uh, at the end of the year and see that like if we're increasing in donations and when we're getting the most donations so typically around the holidays during thanksgiving and december is when we get the most um donations and because you know everyone wants to give back and they're looking for different things to donate to but you know in the spring that's when we're, we're we see a decrease in donations and so we want, you know, people, we encourage people to, to keep donating because that's when we, we need it the most. Yeah. But there's no, there's no requirements and we, we're, we're, always, we're always gladly accepting donations. And especially when we do the food drives, we set a, we set a, um, a goal uh, for that food drive. And we're like, okay, we want 1,500 items donated or we want 500 items donated. We want 500 maybe food items, maybe 500 toiletries. And that's our personal goal. And we kind of let, let whoever's participating know, like, can you help us achieve that goal? Because that's something that we do need. Um, our items do go fast. We do see students utilizing the pantry, which is great. We love that. But we also want to make sure that our demand for students coming in, we also were keeping up with the supply. Yeah, definitely. And you all also, like, take your own donations. Do you all usually have to pitch in if there's not enough? Or how does that work? No, typically, like I said, we have, um, like, when we get monetary donations, that goes into, like, our budget. And into our budget, that's when, like, if, if we're seeing no donations coming in and we really do need to restock, that's when we'll be able to go to the store and we will purchase items. And so we don't see such, we don't see as much as monetary donations coming in through items. So we really do rely on our, our item donations. And where are you all interested um, at U the UTIP? Because I know you all had moved, I think, I don't know when, a while ago. I'm sorry, I can't hear, I can't hear you. You're oh, sorry. I said, <laughs> are you all located on UTIP? Oh. I think you all had moved, no? Yeah, so originally in 2014, the pantry started. It was right across uh, the student engagement office. That's in the Union West. And so in 2018, we, lo we relocated near Memorial Gym. And so that's the gym that, that the volleyball plays in and they have all their games. And it's right across from, I think it's Minor Village. And it's, it's located on the street of West Robertson. And we're in room 105. And you can't miss us. We have a big sign and it says Utep Food Pantry. And it, it looks like kind of like a concession stand. Oh, yes. You can see that. And so when we moved, we got, we got a bigger space and we provided, you know, we got more shelves and we're able to stock more. And also the big thing with that move is that we got to hire employees. Like myself, I was one of the the first students who was hired with the pantry and it was important to hire students because we were able to create events and we we're able to create food drives and before they didn't have anyone like staffed there it was just kind of like on so student would go in and then kind of just take what they needed and then leave but no one was really like working the pantry mm -hmm. so we when we hired our students and we got our graduate supervisor we we're able to focus more on education, that we also got to do research, we got to do advocacy, we also got to work with different resources out in our community. So it was, it was a good, it was a good transition. Oh, that's awesome. And how, tell us about your events and your projects. Like, what do you, what do y'all do? Who do you work with in the community? Yeah, definitely. So there's, we have a, different types of events and projects throughout the year. So we do some donation drives and then we do some tabling where we're kind of just out you know when there's tabling events if it's at orientation or the first week back and we also do presentations so I'll, I'll start with some of our donation drives uh, one of my favorites is the scavenger hunt and so we do that we, we're going to do that every year and what it is is that we kind of contact all the departments all colleges all student orgs and we kind of let them know like hey we're having a scavenger hunt food drive and so what it is, it's we get, we have a list and we kind of list what items we need during that time. And then we score those items by points. And so like the most imagined ones are kind of the higher points. And so that would be like cereal. Cereal goes super fast. 
And so maybe that that's the cereals would be 10 points. And then we'd have box pastas for five points because those are also super like demanded. And so we kind of rank them. Like I said, some could be 10 points, five points, three points, one, like one point. And so a group of students or organizations or departments get together and they try to get as many points as they can. And so that's kind of a friendly competition. We like mm -hmm. to get, you know, they get, they get college fun. gets super competitive. Yeah. And they, we all enjoy it. And so, you know, organizations were like, well, who has the most points? And we kind of keep it a secret till the end. <laughs> and so we have like, it's like a duration of two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of just see, we total up all the points and we see who wins. And with that, we're able, we, we give the winner a trophy. And so it's kind of cool. So every year there's a different, um, a different champion. So our last That's champion fun. was Miners Against Hunger. And they, they donated like, I believe it was like 1,500 points. So they did awesome. And that was one of my favorites. We also do like a, ha a Halloween food drive. Um, like I said, with the tabling, we're out there at different events and we're just kind of pushing about. And that's more so like educating our students. Like, hey, we're here. Like, if you need us, we're in Memorial Gym. And also about food insecurity, about what that is, what that means, and how, how often it's seen on college, on college campuses. And we also try to provide snacks or an activity to make it interactive. And another one of my favorites is the presentation. So like regular in the semester, we like to go into classrooms, into, into um, lectures, and we, with, with the professor's um, help, we kind of talk about the food pantry, that we're there, what food insecurity is. And so typically a professor could schedule like a presentation. They just let us know like what time, what date works best for them. And also, you know, educating our faculty about the pantry. Um, at the beginning, a lot of the, the, the faculty didn't know we were there, or if they had a student disclose maybe that information that they weren't having, you know, the amount of food that they needed, like be able to refer them out. So we're definitely press, uh, pushing our education, educating our faculty, educating and uh, educating our students. Oh, that's awesome. And who do you all work with in the community for like any events or do you just normally, are you connected to a specific food bank or is it just UTEP? So we definitely work a lot with other local food pantries. Um, like I mentioned earlier, if a student has to be enrolled in classes. So if we have an individual or student who may be not be eligible for the food pantry, we like to refer them out to the community. One of the ones we have a bigger relationship with is Cali Memorial Food Pantry. And I believe that that's, it's still located right down, by downtown in Florence. And so we refer them there and we have some brochures there and they, have, they also have a program called the Fresh Start Program. And that's where they have fresh, they offer fresh vegetables and fresh fruit. So it's something that we're not, we're not able to offer. Right. But even if a student comes in and wants, you know, is able, they're able to take from us, we still like to refer them if they need that resource or they might need fresh fruit or vegetables, we refer them out. Or we also have, um, we also have contacted the Veterans Food Pantry. And with that, they, they offer free food assistance to any veterans. Um, we, there's also... A military food pantry there on campus and that's for any military any active military and so different food pantries we like to connect with um we, ha we have a list of resources on our on our website like i said you could just look up utep food pantry and there there's a resource a resource tab and one of our resources is a list of different food pantries but it's organized by zip code so if a student needs you know maybe they need more food than what we're able to give them we want them to be able to go access those other pantries and maybe that maybe closer to them than you know we are and so we do it but all by zip code uh, in El Paso and I believe the county surrounding El Paso. Oh that's awesome and I wanted to ask you if you all have um you have is there like a volunteer basis where people can just go to volunteer to help distribute the food? So we do accept volunteers and it typically begins at the at the beginning of the semester and so with that, um, I know we were going through, I believe that it was the queue, and that's where like students might need to volunteer for a class. And so I know my, my supervisor, she's our graduate assistant. She's the one oversees volunteers. And so it typically depends. We've had like, I believe like six volunteers a semester, five volunteers, and it just depends. We will send out an email or on the queue, we'll have listings there. And I believe you could just look up like UTEP queue and we'll have, if we need volunteers, we'll have it listed. Um, it, we have a, it, it's a tighter space, so where there's only so many volunteers we could take, but we're definitely always looking for volunteers. And with that, it's the same thing as like 
um, what, what I would do. So they would be able to come in and they'd be able to give students, you know, the food and they'd be able to restock the shelves and help with inventory. And we also would like write the expiration date. And so they all, they would, they would be able to fulfill all those responsibilities as well. So I recommend if anyone wants to volunteer or they, they're interested, I would definitely look um, in the beginning of the semester and I would look at the queue. Okay, that's awesome. And how are you all um, transitioning with the, during the COVID? Are you all still in person? Is it so many people? How, how, how does it work? So definitely we've been taking some precautionary measures during this time because we, it, it just, you know, it did a, whole, a full 180. Mm -hmm. So we are only having essential personnel work right now. So there's only two people that are able to go into the pantry and we we are you know we're wiping down after every student comes in we're wiping down all the surfaces um the glass and anywhere that they might be near they might touch and then we also so our employees who are working they also have to go in and they are they are doing fever checks and then they also have to make sure that that they aren't showing any symptoms like i said like fever and they're also those employees are also practicing social distancing so they have to be six feet apart and anyone in the in Memorial Gym has to be six feet apart, and they also have to be wearing a mask. So if if anyone, any individual, if it's a student, if it's faculty, anyone who wants to go into Memorial Gym has to be wearing a mask. And if they're not, they're not able to go into Memorial Gym or any other UTEP camp, uh, campus building. And also, we installed, we just recently installed a, it's called a pec, a pec, pexi glass. And so that kind of avoids contact with our employees and with the students, you know, for safety on both sides. And um, it's able to be kind of like, so the student kind of tells us what they would like to get for that week or whatever for their meal. And then our employees get the, get the food and then they, they're able to leave the, the groceries on the counter and then they kind of take a step back and then the, the student's able to go get the food and then be able to leave. So there's no really contact with our employees and the students. We try to make it as safe as possible. Also with donations, we're being really mindful about kind of just, you know, either wiping them down or kind of letting them sit, you know, on, on the corner of the pantry just for a day or two. And we're just taking as many precautionary measures as we can. Oh, that's awesome. And for the donation, is there a certain um, process you have to go through? Do you have to schedule or... I'm not going to cut it off. If you have to schedule or sign anything to be able to... No. So anyone, so right now we are, we did reduce our hours from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So anyone can go during that time and drop off a donation. So we do have a parking spot right, uh, located right outside of Memorial Gym, and that's for the food pantry. So if that's for a student coming in to get uh, some food, they're able to park there. It's for 30 minutes. They just press their hazards. Or if it's someone who wants to donate and maybe they have a larger amount of donations and they want to park there. And they're able to come in with whatever they want. There's no, they don't have to call before. They don't have to, um, they don't really have, like I said, they just have to sign that, that sheet and kind of let us know like what they donated and um, maybe like their name or their organization. And like I said, that that's just really for us to see like who's donating and like th maybe we can send a thank you to that and see what, what's coming into the pantry. Mm -hmm. But typically um, we're able to get pickups. So like during the normal semester, we're able to go onto campus and go pick up the, the donations. So with that, they have just let us know a week before that they want the, the date they want us to pick up on and we're able to do it as long as it's on campus. But during this time, since we're only having um, two, two staff members there, we're not able to do that until further notice. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't even know that you guys can do Yeah, that. we definitely do. We have like a, like, a, like a crate and everything to take it on. Oh, wow. And is there anything else you wanted to talk about, information you wanted to share for the food pantry to the students? No, I just, I, I think I wanted to mention was that um, during the time, like I said, we did reduce our hours from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., but maybe if that doesn't fall during a student's, like, alignment and they're not able to, they're not available during that time, they're working or doing school work, that the dean of students is trying to accommodate to those students and make special appointments. So if if a student's trying to go during, uh, needs to go to the pantry, but doesn't work during 10 to three, you're able to call them or email them and ask for a special appointment. And so you could contact them. Uh, their number is on, I believe on our website, or you could also just Google like Dean of Students UTEP and you should find their email and their number. 
Oh, okay, so they would contact the dean of students? Or... Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So we're, we're, we're under the dean of students. So the dean of, like the food pantry is kind of underneath it. We're a branch of the dean of students. So they're able to, they're the ones able to like set up those appointments and let us know if there's, there's going to be a student coming in after those hours. Oh, awesome. And as well as I just wanted to mention, like right now during, during COVID-19, we're able to, you know, try to still communicate and still be able to be active with our students or with our donors or even just, you know, with our faculty through our social media. And we're, you know, we're working on just kind of other resources during this time. So I know like Kelly Memorial in March had like a uh, distribution like drive through. And so you're able to go get a box of, of food during, during March. And so we would share that on our social media, on Instagram, on Twitter. We're also on Facebook. We also want, we're doing like recipes and we tried to include like items that you get there at the pantry. And we want to do, you know, organic, uh, organic foods, vegan foods, different types of recipes that we could also, that all students can maybe utilize. And we kind of just like to stay up to date and talk about nutrition or what's going on or about the food pantry, if their hours are changing. And we also love to hear anyone's feedback. If the student wants to see more of something or if they, they have a new idea that they would like to see, definitely let us know. They could DM us on on our social media or they could definitely email us oh awesome so they'll be sure to go follow you all yeah it's it's utah food pantry i believe on all all three platforms okay and actually social media has been a really good tool yeah it, it really see. has and that that's i think that's our biggest way is being able, able to communicate with our students and our faculty is through that and i mean We've had students, you know, also message us about like, well, how, how is the pantry taking, you know, precautionary measures? Like, is it okay if I go or what time hours are you guys, are you guys available? And so we definitely encourage questions or even if, you know, like I mentioned earlier, if there's a food, if you're looking for other food pantries, we have a list of those. And if you have a question, be like, maybe, you know, are you able to tell, you could ask, like, are you able to tell me some food pantries in this zip code? And I'd be able to refer you to that list or one of our other employees would be able to refer you. So we encourage questions about other pantries or about our pantry, anything that you would like, to, they would like to see more of, we definitely encourage it. Oh, that's awesome. You all are doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we know this time is very hard for students and for our faculty. And we want to be there as much as we can. We want to offer as much assistance as we can. And like I said, like, we adjusted our policies from, you know, them being able to come twice in a month to now they're able to come in four times in a month. Um, we want them to contact us if it's through email or through the phone, whatever, whatever they, they feel more comfortable with and let us know what, what we can offer them. We also work with uh, different resources on, on campus, like FAR which deals with homelessness. We also uh, were able to refer them with the counseling center, if that's something they might need. Um, we're also able to refer them to the financial aid and the emergency loans, the book loans. And so just different things. We're not just there for food. And we, yeah. you know, we, we, want to, we want students to know that, that if they ever need something or if they're ever looking for a resource and they might not know where to look for it, they're definitely able to come to us and just let us know what they're looking for. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I guess we can go ahead and wrap up. I am going to save this as an IGTV. So just in case anyone missed it, they can go ahead and look back. And we'll keep um, promoting this just so people know that what the food pantry is, what they do, all the resources you have available. Definitely. And I mean, if there's any questions by anyone who's joined, like I'm, I'm more than happy to entertain them. And is there anyone that might have questions? I see a bunch of waves, eyes, <laughs> thumbs up from Peter P. We love the thumbs up. So they say great. Somebody said great information. I actually did learn a lot too. I knew there was a food pantry and I've seen your, your resources, but I didn't know mm -hmm. the things you said. And there's a lot of students still that, you know, that I'll be like, yeah, like I work at the food pantry or, you know, there's a food pantry there. And they're like, really? Like we have a food pantry? And I'm like, yeah, it's in Memorial Gym. And they're like, where's Memorial Gym? And I'm like, it's okay. Thank My first I've never heard of that. I don't even know where it is either. Yeah. So Memorial Gym, I don't know. 
I don't know if you, if anyone knows like where the education building is. Oh yes. Yeah. And then there's a hill that kind of goes up, and okay. so we're kind of by we're right across from the track and field. And like I said, we're not in the Don Haskins, so we're not in that basketball gym, but we're in mm -hmm. Memorial Gym. So that's where volleyball plays and practices. Mm -hmm. And so when I say that, people are more like, oh okay. Or if they're taking a class there, they have a lot of like the the sports classes there. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're located right in there across from the, the main gym. Oh, okay. Awesome. So it's like right on the hill, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it well, yeah, you go over the hill and then the track is right there. And then we're like the next building over. Oh, and it's by apartments. Yeah. It's, it's kind of confusing at first, but it, it, as long as you kind of just keep going on the hill, you'll find it. Yeah. I used to have a class on the hill. Like, <laughs> like I had to cross over. And oh, I did not like walking up the hill. No, I know. I definitely miss my cardio from walking up that hill every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I don't see any questions. I just see a bunch of thumbs ups. Um, but if you all do have any questions or if you're watching this in the future on the, the live on the future, then we can go ahead and go to the food pantry for more resources or you can all can ask us questions too and we can direct you over there. Yes, definitely. So I want to thank you for joining me and sharing all the information that even I didn't know. <laughs> My bed was helpful to a bunch of people. No, thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank you for having me. Like, if anyone has any more questions and they want to contact maybe uh, during a, via social media or email or through the phone, please do. Yes, please use your resources. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and save it as a IGTV. All right, awesome. And thank you. I hope everyone's staying safe and it's healthy. Yes. Thank you. Have a good one.